Megan. I'm Kate. This is Cooking, Cooking with, with the Bells. Bells. All right, so today we're gonna have a limeade to go with some very yummy chicken. As you can see, we already have our smoker running. So it's getting nice and warmed up for us. So in this pitcher, I have about half a cup of sugar. And then I just diluted that in a cup of hot water just so the sugar dissolved really well. And now I'm gonna pour in the juice of, this is about seven limes. And it's a perfect day for a limeade here. It's nice, yeah. sunny. And when I think of limeades, I just think of beautiful sunshine weather. Yes. And it's not like too hot outside. Like there's a nice breeze, so it's just very relaxing to be outside today. Nice spring day. Yes. Exactly. And I just want to go ahead and forewarn everybody that um, my 10 month old baby is in the background and making all her noise. She's our favorite director to have here on set. <laughs> yeah. All right, and now I'm just gonna dilute this with about four cups of water. That one. And then just a little bit more makes about four cups. And then the rest of this, we're actually gonna take over to our smoker and pour it in our little pot that we keep in the smoker so the water can start heating up. And we just use an old pot that we aren't gonna use for anything else, um, but it just kind of helps create like a steamy atmosphere to keep everything yeah. moist. We'll find out. We can always voice over. Right. <laughs> oh. Right, and then I'm just gonna put the lid on our pitcher and pour us up this limeade. I know you can't really see this at home, but it is such a light, gorgeous green color. Yours, I'm not filling them up all the way because we're probably gonna top these off with ice here in a little bit when it gets warmer out. But it's nice and cool because of the water that we added was already cool, so perfectly refreshing. And then I just have some limes, if you'd like some limes to garnish with. I would a little bit more lime juice. We like ours extra limey, but all of our family has been like, this recipe's perfect. So we just squeeze extra lime in. <laughs> Thank you. Lids and a straw. Green's my favorite color. <laughs> And we'd also love to hear from you. Is there a favorite flavor of limeade that you'd like us to try, whether it be cherry or something crazy like mango limeade? Let us know. Peach, maybe? Ooh, peach limeade does sound delicious. Who knows? Let us know. Perfect. So good. I like my I like it with that extra squeeze of lime adds just enough that it kind of hits you in the back of your mouth a little bit. So it's not like overly sweet and i love that we start off the show with a drink because that means i can have a nice drink all the way through while we're making our recipe it's yes perfect so make sure to make a drink before you start the recipe of some sort <laughs> all right so today we're doing a spatchcock chicken on the smoker i know that sounds super intimidating but i promise you it's not so we're gonna start we're just gonna Put out a couple of pieces of tin foil just to help contain the chicken juice mess since we're outside. You can 100% do this in your sink um, to kind of contain the mess if you're in your in your kitchen. But alas, we have no sink. <laughs> um, not yet, anyways. Before we take it out of our package, I'm just gonna go ahead and let everyone at home know that we are working with a 4.61 pound chicken. So that's gonna tie into about how long we cook it. Yeah. All right, and if you are doing this in your kitchens, this will be a great time to preheat your oven and you're gonna wanna set your oven on about 325 to 350, depending on how quickly you want your chicken to be done. Sharp, sharp object. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're clumsy enough that we feel the need to tell each other. gonna stand back. I don't want to be squirted with the chicken juices. 
Yeah, that's my job. And I'm just trying to, like I said, be careful just to kind of contain the chicken contaminants. Which if we get them kind of everywhere, it's okay. We have a very wipeable tablecloth. Which I 10 out of 10 recommend. Yes, if you're doing any kind of like outdoor cooking or picnic or anything like that, I definitely recommend having a wipeable tablecloth instead of one that you're just gonna chunk in the, the washer just because you can clean it up so easy. All right, so I'm just gonna come over here and go bloop. I'm gonna take this away. All right, so we have our chicken down. And you can see we have our drumsticks. We have our breast right here. And so I'm just pulling out our giblets and gizzards and all the things. It's actually the neck and the gizzards, but you know. My mom would hate me for getting rid of these because she loves to fry them. All right, that's all of it. Now you can save these. These make an excellent stock, really good fried up. Um, we're just not doing that today. And chicken contaminates easily. So it's one of those things that we get kind of nervous about just like setting aside. <laughs> right. All right. And then I'm just gonna pull out you always have these extra pieces of skin. I like to leave them on until right before I put it on the cooker and then I trim them. And you'll see why here in a moment. So now I'm gonna flip him over backwards. And there's, excuse you. Thanks. <laughs> there's, you have the, the backbone here with all the ribs so we're just literally going to cut on each side of that you're kind of cut through the ribs it did say it was a nice spring day out we also have the nice spring wind so i've never actually made this before so katie's teaching me something new as well at just showing how not intimidating it can be and I mean, kind of a shameless plug because I would love for you to stay here and learn, but if you need more in-depth instruction, Cook's Country has a really good, they're the ones that I learned how to do this from. So if you need more instruction or deeper instruction, I would definitely check them out. Sponsor us. Um, I'm just really, you wanna cut all the way out? And then I'm just gonna cut out this other side. And you want a good pair of poultry or kitchen sears. My mom uses, she went to the gardening section and got um, the little pruners, like what you use to prune your roses. And that's what she uses. They're only for food though, that set never touches the garden. <laughs> that's a really nifty fun fact. Um, but yeah, your plain scissors will probably hurt your hand a little bit. <laughs> the meat is cut through. I'm just, the skin's being difficult. There we go. All right. And again, very excellent for stock. Very, very good. So we have that out. And you're gonna wanna be careful because some of these ribs are kind of sharp. So if you're gonna be serving this to your kids, make sure you kind of help them so that they don't accidentally get small bones. And then you just kind of, we're gonna flip it over. And you kind of wanna pull out your meats. And then you just kind of want to press on right here on the breast. And you just kind of crack the last of those bones. And as you can see, wow. now our chicken lays completely flat. 
I know it looked like I was pushing really hard right here because the table started to bow, but literally all I was doing was putting my weight into it. I never actually like plastic table on soft <laughs> ground. Once yeah. again, springtime rain. So, um, just so y'all know, it's not like super hard. If it, the fact that she could talk through it while she was pressing goes, it's going to tell you that. So yeah. definitely not intimidating at all. Easy all peasy. Right. Limeade squeezy. <laughs> Anyways, I don't have dad jokes. I have mom jokes. They're the same thing. <laughs> so now what I like to do to help keep chicken really moist is I get a stick of butter. Um, we have it sitting by our smoker to just get Ooh. softened because <laughs> right out of the fridge. <laughs> right beside the smoker and it's already soft. I love it. Um, so if you will take the stick of butter okay. and just put it in that bowl we have. And we're actually using plant butter. Yes. Because I'm dairy free. But it works perfect. It does. It's and beautiful. They already come in nice sticks. All the new products they come out with. I love it. Okay. Yes. What can we do for you? All right. So let's, in this, let's okay. get some of, uh, we're using Herb de Provence. It's kind of like Italian seasoning with some dried lavender in it, but it's so good. I'm sure there are other ingredients in it. That's just what it reminds me of. And if you've watched any of our other episodes, you probably know we, we love lavender. Yes. All right. So about how much am I going to do here? I like to start with a tablespoon. Okay. Because you can Skip. always add more pop the lid off here we're just eyeballing it because you know your own personal preference okay that's yes. probably about a tablespoon cool how much paprika i usually start with about a teaspoon of paprika just because it can kind of be strong and i just kind of want it to have like an under hint of that mm -hmm. heat and then i do the same with black pepper And then just a little bit of salt. If you use salted butter, you can skip adding salt. You might want to like give it a little taste, but ultimately you know your preference. So you might still want to add the salt. I just personally, when I use the salted butter, usually tend to leave salt out. And while she's getting that all mixed up, what I'm going to do is come in here and just start separating the skin from the breast. I'm actually gonna turn this so I have a slightly better angle. You just kind of work your fingers in there. You could really save a little bit of this butter that you add the seasonings and herbs to to have a nice flavored butter for like some rolls or bread to go okay. with this. That's very true. And as you can see, like I'm going full in here and getting all over drumstick into the thigh. And you'll have a little bit of resistance right at the top of the breast, just because that's where there's a good piece of connective tissue, if you will. So if you just kind of work in there, you'll get through. So this is now beautifully incorporated and Lovely. ready to go. And I have all the skin loosened, so perfect timing. Now what are we going to do with it? Now, since this whole stick of butter is going on this chicken, so I'm just going to stick my hands in. But if you were saving any for your rolls or anything, obviously set aside before you stick yeah. your chicken gut hands in it. Pay attention to cross-contamination because we don't accidentally want anyone getting sick. <laughs> so I just kind of took a knob of butter in my hand and I'm just gonna stick my hand back in here. And this is one time that I really love having someone help me cook because I can just get contaminated and then they can do all the other stuff for me. Um, and as you can see I kind of pulled the skin off of the thigh right here and that's fine. It's just when we put it on the smoker we'll make sure he's tucked in nicely. And just Kind of reform. <laughs> Go back in. 
you want to get as much butter in contact with the meat and then the skin like kind of protects the meat. So and go in on the other side. And you can also like take half the butter, put it over this breast and then have your hands on top of the skin like this and just kind of squish it this way. I know that works better for some people. It's whatever kind of works for you. Boop, 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 boop. So I've used a little over two thirds of that stick, I would say, on the inside here. I'm mostly focusing on the, the breast because as we know, that's the most likely spot to dry out on us. Just like so. Make sure it's well colored. And then what I'm gonna do to kind of help us get a good color is I'm gonna take this last bit and I'm gonna coat the skin in it because that's gonna help the skin crisp really nicely. It's gonna help add another layer, another level of flavor <laughs> to the chicken. And if you're really struggling to get the butter to kind of stick to the skin, if you'll get some paper towels and just pat your chicken, your chicken's probably just a little too damp. And that is, okay. All Easy. right, so our chicken is buttered. So I'm just gonna kind of, I take the little tips, cause they get, you can break them off if you want. There's a nice little like piece of meat on them though, even though it's not much. So I tend to just leave them. And you just, if you have your wing out, I was always taught you just kind of squish it, take the tip, put it like into that wing joint and then fold that wing closed. Um, just to kind of protect it from getting too brown. Um, and then can tie him with some string if you want, but kind of the point of the spatchcock chicken is that he lays flat, so he's actually gonna cook a little faster. So I think he's ready to go on the smoker. So we're trying to keep our smoker at about 300, um, just cause we know when we like add wood, it'll spike to 350. And of course on our smoke, <laughs> sorry, we have a bumblebee apparently that wanted to make an appearance as well. Um, so of course we have our water that we've already talked mm -hmm. about and then we just have like a nice little uh, grill pan baking sheet that it lets the smoke get up to it but kind of protects um, from getting too brown. Yeah. Plus cleaning grill grates is kind of a pain. It is. And then this way this is small enough we can just give it a good scrub in the sink and throw it in the dishwasher. So it's a little easier to keep clean. All right, now I'm going to go and we just do our cut side down and then I'm putting the legs and the thighs towards the heat since they are the moisture part of the meat and keeping the breast kind of away from the heat a little bit. And then the last thing I'm going to do now that's transferred is I have some orange slices and I'm just going to pop those on the breast to help keep it moist. So I think the last thing we're gonna do is we have some, hickory? yes, hickory wood that we have soaking in water. And we're just gonna throw that onto our coals. And the reason that we soak the wood in water is it helps it burn slower so it produces more of the wood smoke, it smokes more instead of just bursting into flame. So it helps you go through less wood, gives you more of the wood smoke for flavor. Just kind of a win, win, win. 
All right, so we'll see everybody back here in uh, probably about two hours. And just every 30 minutes, we'll be coming out here and spritzing it with some apple juice. See you in a few hours. Bye. And we are back. Our chicken, which was a little over four pounds, if I it remember correctly, about 4.6. It took us about three hours today um, due to the high winds that have inevitably come down for this. Just last believe bit. it. <laughs> they were here. Um, it kept our smoker at about 270 to 275 instead of our aimed for 325. Um, but you know, that's okay. Just beautiful chicken. I love the ends of the drumsticks and the wings because they get so mm -hmm. crispy. So I'm going to cut us a little piece to taste. And then we have to reframe until dinner time because this is dinner for the family tonight. So, so, so difficult. How do we feel about a piece of thigh? I would love a piece of thigh. Perfect. I always feel like the thighs are pretty flavorful. Ooh. Look at Look. those juices. And always make sure that when you're cutting your chicken and you see the juices running out, you want to see clear juices. And that's yeah. another sign of being well done. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, the knife is getting put away. The fingers are coming out. We washed our hands. Our hands are clean. I'm just going to stab it with a fork. Get this last piece of that we're gonna have to fight over. Some bits, like this is glistening. It is so juicy. Mm -hmm. It smells great too. It is. I'm a finger eater, I'm sorry. Mm. It's perfect, so moist. It's so good, it's so flavorful. I really love the um, herbs to provenance mm -hmm. that we used on it. I feel like that paired perfectly and the citrus that we put on top of it is great as well. I'm going to just take this with a fork. Mm. Like mm -hmm. it's still a little chewy, which I personally prefer. It's not like mm -hmm. break in half crisp, but it has crispness to it. Like it's yeah. very crispy skin. And you get not only the citrus, you're also getting a little bit of that apple flavor from the apple juice we squirted it with. So it's a lovely chicken. It's a wonderful barbecue mm -hmm. spring day out. It, yeah, it is. And you could pair this with any fruits, really, if you wanted to do pineapple or, you know, actual, you know, orange or oranges. We did oranges well, um, or apple. I mean, apples, you could do apples with it. Limes, lemons. Mm -hmm. I prefer the more citrus personally, just because they are juicy. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can also put them under the skin if you really want to. I just find it easier to put them on top for a little bit. Yeah. I think that's it today. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, you might have learned something. Or if we just happened to entertain you, hit the like button down below. And also, if you enjoyed watching this and you want to see more, you can also hit that subscribe button and the link to our website that features the recipes for the chicken and the limeade will be linked below as well, so go visit us. And I guess we'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye.